Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about the transplantation of animal-derived organs and cells into humans, a medical procedure known as xenotransplantation that could open the door to a renewable source of desperately needed organs. Want to know more? Stay with us. Since the American physician Joseph Edward Murray performed the first successful human kidney transplantation in 1954, this life-saving procedure has become increasingly common. But there's a caveat. Even if organ donations in the EU have increased by 14% in the past 10 years, partly as a result of some countries adopting an opt-out system that considers all brain-dead individuals as donors unless otherwise stated, supply does not yet meet demand. So could transplanting organs from animals, such as pigs, give them a better chance. Here's Gianluca Quaglio from the European Parliamentary Research Service. Well, uh, xenox transplantation definitely overrides some of the obstacles encountered with the tissue engineering, such as vascularization and innervation. And with the improvement of gene editing techniques, such as CRISP-Cas9, scientists have been able to create genetically engineered animals that minimize the problem of organ rejection in humans. The thing is, pig antigens can trigger an immune response in the human body that can lead to the rejection of the newly transplanted organ. That's why knocking out the pig genes responsible for encoding these antigens is crucial to increase the chances of transplantation. Genetically modified pigs not only have engineered organs that are less prone to rejection, but are also protected from a number of viruses that could jump to humans following xenotransplantation. Indeed. Now, in an attempt to mitigate incompatibility, scientists have already attempted more than 40 genetic modifications on the pig genome. And just a few months ago, in October 2021, New York surgeons managed to attach a genetically modified pig kidney to a brain-dead person and made it work normally. A world first that brings the prospect of transplanting animal organs into living patients a bit closer. So, what can the EU do to prepare the ground for such development? Well, let's bear in mind that however promising xenotransplantation may be, it also raises a number of biological and ethical questions. In the EU, xenogeneic cell therapy and products are regulated as advanced therapy medicinal products for which regulations and directives exist, though they may be outdated. The European Medicines Agency came up with specific guidelines for such products in 2009. And while these are certainly a good basis to develop a common ethical and legal EU framework on xenotransplantation, they need to reflect the latest groundbreaking developments of this fast-evolving field. Dr Wayne Hawthorne is world president of the International Xenotransplantation Association. Together with the Transplantation Society and the World Health Organization, they're developing the guidelines and the technology to help xenotransplantation be applied appropriately. We spoke to him from Australia to hear his views. The ARCSA hopes that the general medical and scientific communities understand the substantial guidance and regulatory processes are in place uh, on a world stage along with the medical and scientific expertise necessary to undertake effective and safe clinical trials. But it is important for each country's jurisdiction and regulatory authorities to review their own country's legislation and ensure they're up to date and in line with the new and current scientific and medical technologies to formulate appropriate policies to allow transplantation to go ahead. So it may be time for the EU to set up a dedicated regulatory authority that can address the specific challenges and opportunities of xenotransplantation. Want to dig deeper? Check out Gianluca Qualio and Anna Seliudis' briefing on the EPRS website. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.